In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you the perfect chest workout that's gonna target the upper chest, the middle chest, as well as the lower chest. In addition, I'm gonna be giving you three super important protocols that are required to build that three-dimensional chest, add mass to the pecs. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, now that we've gotten the shirtless portion of the video out of the way, let's get into this. I'm gonna be starting by explaining firstly three important principles that are required to build the perfect chest. And as always, I will include a perfect chest workout routine that you can steal for yourself and build that perfect chest. Now, in order to build the perfect chest, we're gonna be needing to focus on all three areas of the chest. This will include the upper chest, your middle chest, and your lower chest. And when it comes to the structure of the workouts, we're going to be prioritizing that upper chest because it is just such a lagging area of of most guys' physique in the chest. We wanna build that 3D look, that 3D design, so we will put the upper chest exercises at the beginning. Secondly, intensity is going to be huge. As you can see in this graph right here, this is typically the zone where most people tend to train when they're doing any exercise. These are also the same guys that'll say, I'm training, I'm doing the right exercises, but I'm not seeing growth because you're stuck here. You need to aim in that topper area as you're able to see on this graph right here. This is that intensity zone where you're getting closer to the failure, which I will be demonstrating on a lot of these exercises so you can get a clear idea. This is what's going to build that chest. Number three is going to be progressive overload. Progressive overload is king. If you wanna build mass, you need to constantly be challenging the body every single week, which is exactly what progressive overload is. Think of it like you're leveling up a video game character. Level one, you're doing a certain amount of weight at a certain amount of reps. Level two, which could be the next week or the week after, you're either doing more weight for the same reps or you're using the same weight for a couple more reps. Exercise number one, to hit that upper chest, we're gonna be going with the good old incline dumbbell bench press. Now, as you're able to see while I'm performing this, yes, the time under tension is really good. All of the things that I always mention, the time under tension, the form is good, I'm activating my pecs on every repetition, but you're able to see here, at the end of that set, I'm getting to that failure point. I don't just stop when I get my last repetition. If I did, that means the weight's too light or the repetitions were too low. Rather, I'm getting to that point where I'm struggling to barely get the weight up and just to 100% ensure I'm at that failure point, I'll still try and squeak out another full repetition. Typically, it ends with a failure. This is what you want to be aiming for while you're doing these exercises to really build that mass. And as always, here's the bad form of doing this exercise. Horrible time under tension. In fact, what's happening here while you're performing this exercise, there's a lot of stretch reflex. And yes, your muscle is doing a lot on that stretch reflex, which is basically momentum, but your joints are gonna be activated a lot more too in a really bad way that could injure yourself. You're not gonna be actually incorporating your chest as much as you'd like and more so than just the pecs. This is the way you want to avoid. Again, here's the proper form here. We're thinking of mind-muscle connection, never just lifting the weight, but instead putting our mind inside of the chest and contracting those pecs as you're pressing the weight up. Exercise number two, to again continue hitting that upper chest, we're gonna be getting the low to high cable chest flies. Now, as you're able to see here, this is the intensity we're looking for. Yes, my face looks pretty ridiculous while I'm doing it. That's because I'm actually challenging myself. I'm using a weight that's actually very difficult for me. And I'm struggling to try and keep that form as perfect as possible. At the top of the rep, I even squeeze for about a half of a second. This is an isometric squeeze, which will demand a little bit more out of the pecs. And I'm focusing on keeping that chest like I'm Superman here. This will help to increase the activation out of the pecs and minimize a little bit of that anterior deltoids roll. Now, as always, here's the bad form. The bad form, quick, speedy. You'll see that internal rotation of my shoulders as well. This is actually incorporating, again, more of the anterior deltoid. This is why when I mentioned having the chest out like Superman, your shoulders back, this is going to help you to hit more of that upper chest. Exercise number three, to focus on more of that middle chest area, we're gonna be getting some of the push-ups. It will kind of hit the entire chest, but this is a great next exercise. Now, firstly, let's start off with what not to do. These are really quick, speedy repetitions, but most importantly, you'll notice the range of motion. This is a way so many guys tend to perform the push-up, and they'll say, oh, I can do 30 or 40 or 50 push-ups. Yeah, but you're doing these tiny minimal range of motion repetitions that really aren't even activating your chest very much. And in fact, when I was doing this, I more so felt it in my elbow joints and my shoulder joints. And it was mostly my shoulders doing that and momentum. Try not to perform this exercise this specific way if you don't want to hit the chest. 
Now this is the range of motion that we're looking for. And in fact, what you kind of want to think about is trying to get that chest to touch the ground, keeping that torso and that body straight like a plank. As well, you will see that intensity factor when I get closer to that failure repetition. Now, when I'm performing this exercise, I typically like to do about three sets to absolute failure. So if your failure point's 10 repetitions, good, aim for that. If your failure point is 30 repetitions, even after all of the exercises you've just performed, good, go ahead and do that. This is really going to help to break down that muscle tissue that your body will then repair in the coming days to build that perfect chest. Final exercise to hit more of that lower chest, we're gonna be getting some cable high to low flies. Now let's throw it up here, the bad form, the way that as I'm gonna preach not to perform the exercise. This is gonna be very similar to the low to high cable flies where we were hitting the upper chest again that time under tension is bad the rounding of the shoulders not getting a full repetition we want to avoid this and now the proper form when you're thinking about this again you want to be thinking about not just connecting your hands but activating that lower chest think about contracting it on every repetition this is the finisher and we have had a lot of volume already in the workouts so for this exercise I like about two to three sets of about 10 repetitions so boom, there you go. Perfect chest workout, give it a go. Yes, there is a lot of volume. So you can take out one of the exercises, maybe one of the upper chest exercises, but performing this two times per week, 48 hours rest in between, you'll build that massive chest. Hey, just a heads up, BHP right now is having their huge summer sale up to 60% off on their supplement bundles. All supplements are on sale, and if you use code BARBARIAN, you're gonna get yourself an extra discount. So that's OxyShred, OxyWay, OxyGreens, all the Oxys, they're all available to you, up to 60% off. Link in description. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like down below. I'll see you in the next video.